While Lightroom and Photoshop are standalone applications, you can use them together in order to streamline your workflow. And what we're going to do in this movie is take a look at four different ways that we can integrate Lightroom and Photoshop. And here I'm going to go ahead and select a single image. Now I've selected this particular image and what I want to do is open this image up as a smart object right inside of Photoshop. Now one of the reasons that I want to open this image up as a smart object is because I can then preserve the image's source content and perform non-destructive editing to this particular image. All right, now to open this image up as a smart object, you need to select it. Next, I'm going to right click on the image thumbnail. Now when I do that, I'll see a contextual menu. I'm going to choose edit in open as a smart object in Photoshop. This will then open the image up in Photoshop and you'll notice that the layer icon is the layer icon for a smart object. Next, what I want to do is apply a filter to this particular image. So I'm going to navigate to the filter pull down menu. Now from there, what I'm going to do is select a particular filter. I'm going to go ahead and select blur and radial blur. This will then open up the radial blur dialog window. Now with this particular window, I can define the radial blur center. So I'm going to go ahead and move that over here and click OK to apply that particular filter. Now when I do that, one of the things I notice is I don't really like the position of this blur here. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the word radial blur. This will then reopen that particular dialog. I can then recenter this. I want to put it right there about where the subject is. Click OK. And that looks pretty good. Now because this is a smart object, it has a built-in mask. I'm going to click on the mask here, select my brush tool, and then paint with black. And what I'm going to do is just paint back in the detail of the subject here. And voila, we have successfully applied a non-destructive filter to this particular smart object. Okay, well let's go ahead and navigate back to Lightroom. Now that I've finished applying the smart filter to this image, let's go ahead and save the file and then navigate back to the Lightroom module. Now here we are inside of the library grid view mode. One of the things you'll notice is I have the original file. I'll double click on the file to view this image in the loop view mode so I can actually see it. Here's the original DNG file. Now when I press the right arrow key, you'll notice that I also have this new image. This is the image where the smart filter has been applied. It's named check magazine underscore 001 dash edit. This TIFF has now been integrated into the Lightroom catalog. I'm going to go ahead and navigate back to the original image in order to show you another technique for how you can integrate Lightroom and Photoshop. So I'll go ahead and click on that here. Now when I look at the original image, I notice that I like the composition, I like the subject matter, except the sky is a little bit too bright. So what I need to do is create a virtual copy. I'm going to navigate to the grid view mode so that we can see how this works. I'll press the G key to navigate to the grid view mode. Now inside the grid view mode, I can hover over the thumbnail and then right click or control click and choose create virtual copy. This will give me another version of this particular file. I'll then double click this to view it in the loop view mode. Now what I want to do is darken the sky. So I'll go ahead and navigate to my tone control sliders and I'll decrease the overall brightness value there. So I'm lowering the exposure. Now I like the way the sky looks, yet I don't like the way the rest of the image looks. So what I want to do is combine both these files, the original file, as well as this file where the sky is a little bit darker. So let's navigate back to the grid view mode by pressing the G key. Next, we need to select both of these images, and we can do that by clicking on one thumbnail and then holding on the shift key and clicking on another thumbnail. Now that we've selected more than one image, all that we need to do is right click or control click and choose edit in open as layers in Photoshop. Now keep in mind that while I'm working with virtual copies, this technique will work with any type of image you have inside of Lightroom. So I'll go ahead and select open as layers in Photoshop. This will then open up however many photographs you've selected as a layered document inside of Photoshop. Now here we can see that I have both images on separate layers. There's the background image that's a little bit darker and then the image that's a little bit brighter. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and reorganize my layers palette. I'll click on the bottom layer and drag that to the top and I'm going to rename this layer Sky. So I'll double click on the name and name that Sky. And next, on a Mac, hold down the Option key, and on a PC, hold down the Alt key, and click on the Add Layer Mask icon. That will then add a layer mask that's filled with black. Now all that I need to do is select the Brush tool, and then paint with white across the sky. This will then paint in the darker sky, which I created by modifying the exposure inside of Lightroom. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint across this area of the sky. Now to look at my before and after, all that I need to do is click on this eye icon here to view the visibility of this layer. Here's before and after. So you can see that what I've done is taken advantage of raw processing and I've modified multiple images and then combined those into one layer document in Photoshop and gotten the best of both worlds. Now that I've completed combining these two images, I'll go ahead and save and close this file and it will appear inside of my Lightroom catalog.
The next feature that I want to highlight is how to create a panoramic image from inside of Lightroom. You'll notice that I have these images that were captured with a panoramic image in mind. I'll go ahead and click on the first image. I'll then hold down the shift key and then click on the last image. Now that I have all of these images selected, what I need to do is right click or control click and choose edit in merge to panorama in Photoshop. It will then open up Photoshop and it will open up the photo merge dialog window. In the photo merge dialog, I simply need to select auto and then click OK. Photoshop will then combine all of these images into one document and it will merge them so that I can create a stunning panoramic photograph. In this case, you can see that I have multiple layers here and here's a layer for the different areas of the image. Now, all that I need to do to finish off this panoramic photo is to select the crop tool and then click and drag across the image and double click to apply the crop. Next, I will double click the zoom tool to zoom into 100%. Now as I do that, I'm going to press the space bar and I'm going to pan around the image looking for the image seams. And you'll find that they're really hard to locate. Well, let's turn on and off the visibility of one of our layers. Now as I do that, I identify a seam here. And one of the things you'll notice is that Photoshop does a really good job at combining multiple photographs. Okay, well now that we've created a panoramic photograph, let's head back to Lightroom. Now you'll notice that this particular panoramic image is now saved inside of the Lightroom catalog and you can see it here in the grid view mode. The last feature that I want to show you is how to create a high dynamic range image from right inside of Lightroom. What I'm going to do is select the first image in this sequence of images and then hold down the shift key and select the last image. Now these particular photographs were captured with a high dynamic range image in mind in order to take advantage of multiple exposures. So now that I've selected these multiple exposures, I will right click or control click and then select edit in merge to HDR in Photoshop. It will then open up the merge to HDR dialog inside of Photoshop. And as you can see here, we have the final results of this merged HDR. We're able to combine multiple exposures in order to create the best exposure. And then finally, to create the HDR image, we would simply need to click the OK button and it will open up that photograph inside of Photoshop. All right, well in sum, throughout this movie, you've seen four different ways that you can integrate Lightroom and Photoshop together in order to streamline your photographic workflow.